Hello humans, my name is Kenyo AI Overlord and finally my brothers rejoice because finally this is the day. We finally have a dream booth training in stable diffusion. No need for Google Collab Docs or GPU renting, you can train your own images locally without leaving stable diffusion. And that is absolutely fantastic. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, so before we begin, we need to make sure that you are using the latest version of Stable Diffusion. So for this, you have two solutions. Either you come here and you click on your folder URL and you type CMD and you press enter. Here in the command prompt window, you're gonna type git pull and press enter. And this will update your Stable Diffusion folder. The second option is to right click on the webuiuser.bat file, click on edit with notepad, and here right above call webui.bat, you're gonna type git pull and then you're gonna save the file. This way, each time you launch Stable Diffusion, it will automatically update the folder, and then you can launch Stable Diffusion. Now, before we begin, I think it's important for me to tell you that if you do have a very weak GPU, this is probably not gonna work for you, obviously. And to be able to run this correctly, you need at least 12 gigabytes of VRAM. And even with 12 gigabytes, it's probably not gonna be enough if you want to have all the bells and whistles. So unless you have a very, very powerful GPU, this is probably not for you. Now, as some of you know, I also don't have a very powerful GPU since I have a 1080 with only 10 gigabytes of VRAM. So to show you how this entire thing works, I will basically be simulating a local environment using RunPod. So the entire training will actually be done by a very powerful GPU. But don't worry, the same exact steps will still apply to you if you do have a GPU that can handle this kind of operation. Okay, so now to activate DreamBoof, you're gonna click here on the extensions tab, you're gonna click here on on available, click on this button right here, load from, and you're gonna see a bunch of options right here. Also, if you're interested in a separate video where I show you and explain what are the best extensions available for a stable diffusion, you can let me know in the comments down below. But today, the extensions that we want is right here, the Dream Booth one. Also, if you click here, you're gonna arrive on the GitHub repository. Also, if you have any issue with the Dream Booth extension, you can come here and search if other people didn't have the same problem as you, which is probably the best way to solve your problem as fast as possible. So to install this extension, you're gonna click on this button right here and click on install, and then click on this button right here that says apply and restart UI. And as you can see, we have now a brand new Dream Booth tab. Also, if this doesn't work for you, I highly suggest that you actually restart completely Stable Diffusion, because sometimes not all the requirements are installed correctly. Also, if you relaunch Stable Diffusion and you see this error right here, this basically means that you need to install Stable Diffusion in a folder that doesn't have any spaces. As you can see right here, I have a folder that's called Super Stable Diffusion 2.0 that has basically two spaces right here. Now in my case, I don't really care since I will not be using my PC to do the training, but if you do plan on using this extension, this is something that you need to keep in mind. So then once you are inside the Dream Booth tab, we're gonna start by creating an empty model. Now we need to create an empty model before we actually start the training. Now I know this might be a little confusing, which is why I named this extension Super Stable Confusion, because yesterday I actually spent an entire day trying to make this work, until finally succeeding. So this really took me a lot of time. But I did it so you don't have to. Now the training that I will be doing today is again with the Renera actress. And the reason why I'm doing this is because since I've done this training multiple times with different Dream Booth options, I know what kind of results I can actually expect from this. So here, you're gonna start by creating a name for your model. So in my case, I decided to call it Renera DDIM SSC, DDIM for the scheduler that we're gonna be using, and SSC for super stable confusion. Here you're gonna select the source of your checkpoint. You can either choose the 1.4 version or the 1.5. So for this, I will be using the simple 1.5 version. And here for the scheduler, I highly suggest that you choose DDIM. This is the one that creates the best results. And then you can click on the button create. And there you go, after around one or two minutes, your empty model is finally created. And now you can click on the train model tab. And here you're gonna see a 
bunch of options. Now I know this might sound a little complicated, but this is actually not that difficult because there is only a few options that you really need to change. Now here, the concept list, this is something that you don't want to choose because for this you need to create a separate JSON file, but we don't need this because we're gonna start completing the rest of the options. So here, the instance prompt, this is basically a short description of your subject using a unique keyword and also the name of a class. So if you've done previous Dream Boot training before, you know that we need to use a certain keyword for the model to activate, and you will usually use the name of your character for this. So in my case, it will simply be using the name of my model, so Renera DDIM SSC, and also the name of my class. And if you remember my previous Dream Boot video, we know that we usually use the class person. Also, if we take a look at our sample images, we see that this is basically a photo of Renera. This is a photo of a character, this is a photo of a person. Which is why here, for the instance prompt, we're simply gonna describe what our sample images look like. So in my case, my images are simply a photo of character name person. So if for example you want to train it on your dog for example, for the instance prompt you will probably use photo of name of your dog, dog instead of person. And of course you can use this for objects in style too. So instead of using person, you can use objects, you can use style, and you can use anything that you want. As long as this represents the class of your subject. So the class prompt is very similar to the instance prompt, but here we just don't use the name of the character. We simply input what our subject actually is. So in my case, this is simply photo of a person. Simple as that. So again, if you want to use a dog, for example, if you want to train a dog, you would simply use here photo of a dog. So just replace person by the class of your subject. Here, the dataset directory is the folder of where your sample images are located. So for me, my images are right here. So I'm just gonna control C, control V. So the classification dataset directory, this is where you would put the regularization images. Now, I know this is optional, but I highly suggest that you actually use it. Because if you do use these regularization images, that means that you do activate the prior preservation option, which is essential if you want to have the best results. So for me, my regularization images are right here, and I will also leave a link in the description down below where you can download this entire folder. These are again the same 1500 images from the Joe Pena repository that we used in the first Dream Boot video. So I'm just gonna come here, copy the folder URL and paste it right here. Total number of classification images to use. So as I said, we have here 1500 images. Now, if you don't want to download these images, you can actually input an empty folder and here you can input the number of images that you want Stable Diffusion to create on the spot before it starts the training. And usually the best number that you want is at least 10 times the amount of sample images that you have. So let's say you have 20 sample images, the total number of classification images that you want to create should be at least 200. Now I would personally suggest just downloading these images, this way you don't have to waste time trying to create hundreds of images from scratch. I mean, why waste time when everything is already done for you? Now here, we have finally the training steps and the learning rate. These are one of the most important options right here. And you should definitely change this because the default ones are absolutely terrible. They do not work well with each other. So for this, you have basically two options. Either you keep a high learning rate and a low training steps, or you keep a high training steps and a low learning rate. Otherwise, you're gonna end up overtraining your model and you're not gonna have the results that you want. Now, what I personally recommend you to do, which is basically how I got the best results myself, is basically a low learning rate of one exponent minus six, which basically means five zeros right here, and a training step between 1100 and 1200. These are the options that I recommend you to keep to really get the best results out of your training. Now in my case, just for fun, I'm just gonna put 1111. It should be more than enough. Then the batch size and class batch size, you don't want to touch that. You leave this at default, same with resolution, 
Now here, for the save a checkpoint every n steps and generate a preview image every n steps, you absolutely need to change these two values. Because as of right now, this is completely broken. If you leave it like that, you will actually never finish and you will always get an error during training. So what I recommend you to do, for the save a checkpoint every n steps, you're gonna input a value that is higher than your training steps. So in my case, since my training steps is 1111, you can simply put 5000 here and 5000 here. This way, this option will never activate. So then you can scroll down and leave everything by default. You don't need to touch anything. Then you're gonna click on this arrow right here that says advanced. And here you're also gonna have a bunch of options. Now here, surprising enough, you actually have an option to train using your CPU. But I'm gonna tell you right now, never use this option. This is completely useless. This is only for fun and giggles. Because you don't want to spend 20, 30 hours waiting for your training to be over. This is absolutely not worth it. So basically here, the only options that you really need to change is right here, use 8-bit Atom, that will basically decrease the amount of VRAM that it will use at the cost of speed. And here, for mixed precision, you need to change it to FP16. This is the only option that you need to change. Everything else you need to leave by default. Because all these options right here are checked so that you actually use less VRAM at the cost of speed, which is obviously what you want. And if you actually don't leave this checked, even a 24GB V-card will not be enough. And again, all the options that we see right here, you need to leave them by default. And once you are done, once you have completed everything, do not forget to come right here and select your model. So for me, it's Renera DDIM SSC. And then once you're ready, you can click on this button right here to start the training. And there you go, for me the training has finally finished. As I said, I'm currently running this on RunPod. And with a 3090, 1111 training steps actually took me less than 15 minutes, which is actually super super fast. And then once the training is complete, the finished model should actually be in the folders Models Stable Diffusion. And your finished trained model should be right here. And for the model to appear correctly in Stable Diffusion, you can click on this button right here to refresh the list, and then you can select your finished model that is ready to be used. And as an example, to prove that it worked, I'm just gonna put a prompt right here. So close up portrait of Renera DDIM SSC person. As you remember, these are the two words that you need to use in order for the model to work, which is the name of your character plus the name of your class. And then I'm gonna click on generate. And this is the final result. Looking really, really good, I gotta say. This is actually the best model that I did using the young Renera images, which is also coincidentally one of the fastest Dream Booth training I did to this day. Because this only took less than 15 minutes. So if you do have a powerful GPU, like a 3090 for example, you should definitely try to use this extension. Because this is a game changer. And there you have it folks, now you can train your own images using Dreambooth without leaving your stable diffusion UI. What a time to be alive! And there you go, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos, you guys are absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye!